Good morning to our YouTube viewers and our Facebook viewers and to uh, each of you, my Macedonia church family. Uh, we say good morning to each and every one of you. We thank God for this day, for this opportunity we have to share in the word of God. For truly the Lord has blessed us and allowed us another privilege to come together um, by way of uh, YouTube and by way of Facebook. And we're thankful and grateful to God for that. Uh, not going to be before you long. I just want to ask that you would continue to pray for one another. Uh, continue to encourage one another during these times and be prayerful for our church as we prepare to uh, reopen. Uh, we just ask that you would continue to pray for the leadership, uh, that we would make the right decisions and that we would prepare the church to be ready for reentry uh, when, when that time comes. And so we just ask that you would be prayerful for us in that endeavor as well. Uh, I want to thank each of you for uh, your continued con contributions to our ministry. Uh, certainly it has been a blessing to us and we certainly want to give God all the glory and give him all of the praise for allowing us this opportunity um, to uh, receive revenue. And uh, you all have been so faithful and so grateful and we're so grateful for that. Uh, we ask that you would uh, please uh, consider online giving. Uh, we are now uh, able to receive uh, your offering uh, by way of Givelify, uh, download it to your smart device. And um, as you download it to your smart device, um, you will find that we are uh, listed uh, in Givelify and uh, you can contribute uh, to this ministry uh, by way of Givelify. Uh, that is the Macedonia Baptist Church 106 Glass Street, Jackson, Tennessee 38301. Make sure that you contribute. If, you're, if your desire is to contribute to us, that you contribute to Macedonia uh, Missionary Baptist Church 106 Glass Street. With that being said, let us go to God in prayer um, as you prepare, as we prepare to go into another study session. Uh, if you would open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, we were, uh, we journeyed through chapter 4 on last week, but this week we will go to chapter 5. And so uh, let us journey to chapter 5. And as you are journeying to chapter 5, also prepare your hearts for prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come together to share again in the Word of God. We ask that by your Holy Spirit, Lord, you would speak to our hearts. But we pray, O oh God, that as you speak to our hearts, Lord, we pray that we will have a listening ear to hear what you have to say to our hearts. And then, O oh God, it is our desire that when we leave this place, we shall be doers, not just hearers that you might get the glory, and that we might receive the blessing. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for what you're about to say. We shall always give you glory. We shall always give you honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Again, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And um, if you were with us on last week, um, Paul took time to encourage uh, the Corinthian church to let them know that you know we have to experience good and bad throughout this life and if we're going to reign with Christ we must understand the importance of suffering as Christ suffered as well but he gave us hope in that um, as I said last week behind every burden there is a blessing Paul uh, laid that out for us on last week uh, this week we're going to chapter 5 and he's going to talk about the future hope uh, as we journey to chapter 5 on today. So for those of you that have your Bibles, if you would, let us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, we're going to look at the first five verses and discuss what Paul is talking about in this particular, this particular chapter, in these particular verses. From the original King James Version of the Bible, um, Paul records these words for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so being that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us 
the earnest of his spirit. So Paul talks about a future hope, um, but he also talks about um, the right now. And he talks about this earthly uh, house of this tabernacle, and he's talking about the physical body. But he's comparing the physical body uh, to a time when um, the forefathers, uh, as they journeyed, particularly uh, Moses and Abraham, when they journeyed from place to place, uh, they pitched tents. And over time, especially with the sojourn of Moses out of Egypt to the promised land, uh, as they took up those tents and then reestablished those tents as they traveled, those tents began to wear down. They, they had gotten torn. Uh, they were weak. Um, uh, they no longer had the, the uh, covering that it provided. Uh, it had holes in them. Uh, it had just gotten ragged. Uh, by the time they got to the wilderness, um, and then during their time in the wilderness, uh, some of those tents were no longer able to be used. Uh, they were done away with or dissolved. He compares that to our mortal bodies in that these bodies that we have uh, is the tabernacle of God. Uh, it is indicative of a tent in the sense that, you know, we are not young forever. And these bodies, over time, begin to wear. I can recall uh, the old saint would say, this old building keeps on leaning, and my soul has got to move. Uh, this, is, this is where the old saint uh, really penned that phrase, because they realized over time that this earthly body um, could not sustain the test of time. At some point, it would wear down. Uh, listen, I'm only 49 years old, and uh, I can share with you uh, that this 49-year-old body is nothing compared to that 20-year-old body I had uh, 29 years ago. Uh, it's a little worn now. It's got some holes here and there. Uh, and so it is day by day dissolving. But I have a future hope, and that is what Paul was trying to explain to the church at Corinth when he writes this letter. He says that our future hope is that even though this particular body uh, fades away, he says there is another building that's made in the heavens that is eternal, which means it won't fade away, it won't get old, uh, it won't rust out, uh, it won't have holes, uh, it will be a body which had pleased God and made by God, who is eternal. He says so, he's really trying to uh, get us to understand that there should not be any fear in death when it comes to the believer. Uh, that we have nothing to fear. For if this body were dissolved, God got us another one that he made specifically for us and he made with his own hand. He says, this is, this is done that when we stand before him in judgment, verse 3 says, we shall not be found unclothed. He says, therefore, you know, we, we have this desire. Believers should have this di desire to be clothed. Um with our immortal bodies uh, when that time comes. He says, uh, Now he that wrought for us the self same thing is God, who has given to us the earnest of his spirit. He says the reason why uh, we will receive this gift is because a part of him lives in us. And so he identifies himself with us by the spirit that he has placed in us. And so by him placing that spirit in us, he now uh, has the responsibility of creating us a body for that spirit that he has given to us. 
And so Paul is encouraging the church, letting them know that it's all right uh, for this body to be dissolved. Uh, God got us another one that he's made uh, for us uh, with his own will and by his own will and, and according to his own purpose. As we look at verses uh, 6 through uh, verses 10, uh, the text says, Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be, pre to be absent from the body, excuse me, and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone may receive the things done in his body according to he, that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So Paul says this future hope that we have is to be clothed upon uh, with this body that God has specifically created for us. It is an immortal body. It does not fade away. Um, uh, there, there's no death. It does not deteriorate. It is a body that is immortal, created by the eternal and immortal one, God himself. He prepares this because each and every one of us uh, must appear before the judgment seat of Christ and it's important to uh, go before the judgment seat of Christ in a glorified body he says so while we're living we should always be confident knowing that while we're in this body we're yet absent from the Lord he says but to be present with the Lord eternally and forever he says we have to um, vacate this body that we may be clothed upon with a new body. And that new body allows us access and opportunity to be with the Father and the Son. And it's important that we have to be clothed with an eternal body because before there can be judgment, we have to be changed. Paul will talk about this a little later in that we have to be transformed and transferred from this earthly body uh, from this earthly tabernacle to a heavenly body, uh, to a heavenly being, um, where we may sit before the righteous God who shall judge us and judge everything that we've done. I like this because he's not cut it, cutting any corner. Uh, once we've been prepared, in other words, we have to be prepared to go before God, to go before the judgment seat. Once we have been prepared to go before the judgment seat of Christ, the Bible says that we shall be judged, and, uh, and a lot of people will question this, you know, all of us, and the text tells us specifically, we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Everybody. Uh, there were many that will argue this uh, going back to John uh, chapter 3, when John says, for there is uh, no condemnation to them who are of Christ. Uh, that word condemnation uh, could also uh, be uh, synonymous with the word judgment. And so if you replace the word judgment uh, with condemnation, then it would say there would be no judgment to those who are in Christ. Uh, that is not what John is saying. Uh, John, John was not saying that um, we would not appear before the judgment seat, but what uh, John was trying to say is that we would not be found guilty because Jesus had already paid the debt for sin. But one thing that John didn't say, and Paul is saying, that when we're all going before the judgment seat of Christ, and every one of us, um, the things that have been done in our bodies, the things that we have done here on this earth, are recorded in the books. And in those books are the deeds of humanity. And all of your works are in those books, whether they were good or whether they were bad. The good thing about this is that those who are in Christ uh, can be forgiven of those bad things that have been done on this earth, which gives you access to heaven and the kingdom. Um, so uh, 
just know that we all have to stand before the judgment seat. And everything we've ever done here on this earth has to be made mention of. But the difference between us and the unbeliever is that we can be forgiven of those things that we've done that were bad. So I hope I explained that pretty good. But he wanted us to understand that everybody has to go before the judgment seat. So that's why it's important to do good uh, and not evil because at the judgment, those evil things will be brought up again. Uh, so there's nothing that we do in private or in secret that won't be brought up in judgment. Uh, you can run, but you can't hide. Uh, here's another one. What's done in the dark, uh, one day will come to the light. Now, there may be, may be some things that you will take to your grave, and that's fine. But just know that at judgment, whatever you did, if nobody else knew, God knew. And he wrote it down. And it's going to be brought up in the day of judgment. Amen. Ooh, that's kind of tight. But it's the truth. So in verse 11, he says, Therefore, uh, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences for we commend not ourselves again unto you but we give you occasion to the glory on our behalf that you may have somewhat to an answer to them which glory in appearance and not in heart for whether we be beside ourselves it is to God or whether we be sober it is for your cause for the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that we died for all, and that he died for all, excuse me, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but him that which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth now ye know man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yea, now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become anew. Let me back up. Verses 11 through 15, uh, Paul kind of gives uh, uh, the many motivations for his ministry. But he focused on the judgment of Christ uh, that was sure to come. Um, he says, you know, whether we're to ourselves is to God or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. He says, for the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all were dead. So he wants us to know that when Christ died for all, every believer now that comes or, or accepts him as Christ now come as dead, but now would be made alive through him. And so all of us were dead to our sins. Um, the penalty of sin was death. And we all were born in sin and shaped in iniquity from birth, even in our mother's womb. And so um, we were all born to death. And so by accepting Christ, we now accept that death and also receive new life or life through him. Uh, we were dead in our sins, but now we're made alive in, in him. Um, and so by being this, we have become a new creature. And so old things are now done away with, and now all things have become anew. We have new life in Jesus Christ. Um, the former things... Uh, have been done away with. Now we live a new life for Christ. Verse 18 says, And all the things are of God, who have recorded, or who have reconciled, excuse me, who have reconciled unto himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, when we are now then we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Very powerful. He says, by becoming this new creation, um, God, through his son, reconciled us back to him because of the sins of the first Adam. Uh, we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Uh, the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the second Adam, which was the son of God, reconciled us back to God. The original fellowship that he had with the first Adam is now being reconciled through the second Adam. And now we all have the opportunity to be children of God by the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's our faith in his life, death, burial, and resurrection that reconciles us back to God and gives us brand new life in him. And so for every believer, if God loved us enough to reconcile us back to him, we ought to also have the spirit of reconciliation when it comes to our fellow man. And that if God forgave us, we ought to be willing to forgive others. And this process is a continuing process that God has placed into the heart of man because we have the earnest of his spirit. Spirit, He now says to us that we should all have that same spirit of reconciliation, that as God reconciled us back to him, through a son who knew no sin, he says our faith in him now gives us the opportunity to reconcile ourselves with one another as well. And we should always be willing to reconcile one with the other because Christ uh, loved us enough that he died for us to reconcile, that we may be reconciled, excuse me, back to the father. So now we need to understand this, the importance of reconciliation how important it was to God to reconcile uh, humanity back to himself. Uh, we ought to understand and know how important it is for us to reconcile one with the other. Um, you know, the Bible teaches us that we should never uh, go to bed in, in anger and in, in our wrath. Uh, but we also should know the importance of forgiveness. Notice that uh, Jesus says that if we're not willing to forgive one another, then he's not going to be able to forgive us when we come before God in judgment. So let us all understand the importance of burying the hatchet, putting those things behind you. Uh, stop carrying this weight of unforgiveness, but learn how to forgive and be reconciled one with the other because there is no sin that God cannot forgive. There is uh, no reconciliation that God cannot reconcile other than blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but these little bitter things that we have, these little minute things that we have going on that cause us to separate from one another, it's important that we understand the importance of reconciling one with the other because God reconciled us back to himself. Uh, what a great chapter today. Uh, I'm stopping right there. There's 23 minutes. Uh, this is about the shortest Wednesday Bible study that you've ever had. But... I want to share with you the importance of knowing that we're only here for a short while. If I could sum chapter 5. We're only here for a short while. And every day this body keeps on getting a little weaker. But we can have confidence in knowing that there is life after death. And there is a, uh, although we live in this mortal body, God himself has created us an immortal body that is eternal and lives forever. And so we have this confidence knowing that, you know, to be in this body, we're absent from the Lord, but to uh, be out of this body is to be present with him. He's given us the earnest of his spirit. and We should be thankful for that because he's given us the earnest of his spirit. Uh, we are new creatures in him because of our faith in him. And we have been reconciled back to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us continue to reconcile ourselves one with the other. I hope something was said today that would further your walk with Christ, for truly it is about our walk with him. May the Lord continue to bless you real good, for we pray that uh, 
this word helped you, that it, it blessed you. We pray for you and your families that you would continue to search the scriptures for strength and encouragement uh, in your daily walk. For it, truly the word of God is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path, and we should always find comfort in the word of God. I'd like to pray with you. May we pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this day, for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for reconciling us back to you. We thank you, O God, for we thank you for new life in you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, go with us, stand by us, lead, guide, and direct us each day of our lives. And we shall continue to look to the hills from which cometh our help, realizing all of our help comes from you. Therefore, we thank you now and we give you praise. In the precious name of Jesus and for his sake we do pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. May heaven smile on you. Is always our prayer. Until we meet again, uh, keep the faith. Stay strong. Macedonia, we are Macedonia strong. We love you. We miss you. And we look forward to seeing you very, very soon.